has something to do with revisiting and correcting faults in foundation. Foundational faults on the subject of relationship and marriage. And the moment I saw that, uh, I was asked to choose between that and some other topics that were simpler. The moment I saw the subject of foundation, I decided to take it because there is um, a major challenge in this area of relationship, marriage, dating, that um, the Lord has to help us to crack. Because I think this will probably be my either 14th or 15th year of crusading. We launched the National Youth Movement and the project that took us um, and the journey of going after every Nigerian young man. So I know that those who wrote that word foundation might be thinking about the language I hear everywhere in the body. Whenever you hear foundation, they start thinking about breaking of courses, going to deal with demons in the village and all that. That's not my own idea of foundation. <laughs> That's not the angle I'm going to come from at all. My own angle is the biblical, the Judeo-Christian biblical foundation. Now, somebody else can tackle that part if that's what you are looking out for. It's good to do deliverance, and I believe in it. But deliverance is like going to cut a bush, cut down trees to prepare the land for planting. But after cutting the bush, burning the bush, and you don't plant anything, all the things you cut down will grow back again. Okay, this is how I'm going to begin. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Okay, Jesus said to Peter, Thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay. Somebody will say, Why are you reading about the building of the church? Because the blueprint for building the home is the same blueprint for building the church. As a matter of fact, if you pass the Bible school, of relationship and marriage, you are qualified to pastor any church. Young people, if you master the art of managing relationships successfully, in general, and the type of relationship that leads to marriage and the marriage, marriage relationship itself, if you can develop yourself in this area, you are developing yourself for one of the highest form of leadership there is. There are different types of leadership. You hear about transformational leadership. You hear about autocratic leadership. The different types, different models. If you notice, the Bible itself recommends two principal models. Two. The Old Testament Bible all the way to the New Testament recommended one and Jesus in his teaching recommended one more. If you bring the two of them together, you get the complete biblical picture of what a leader is supposed to be according to the kingdom. The, the God Almighty model of leadership is the fathering model, father fathering model. That's why he made himself as the epitome, the perfect example of that. Can you imagine what a good pastor does for his church? Can you imagine what a good father does for his family? Do you know what will happen if our governors and our presidents will become like that? They will see the whole nation The fathering model of leadership 
there is another word that is used in scripture to also describe that is the shepherding model so a king a political leader or so on and so forth God will address them as shepherds somebody like Joseph who was 30 when he became prime minister he said to his brothers God has made me a father to Pharaoh and to the whole land of Egypt this is the office of the prime minister but he brought a model of leadership a biblical model of leadership to bear on that office <clears throat> of course Jesus brought another side to it which is actually another way of looking at the same thing he called it the servant leadership model that automatically lays the foundation for what I'm talking about the marriage relationship in the kingdom is basically broken into two stages. Can I borrow three young men? Maybe at, at the lower level and I can come down and do that. Three young men that are young. Okay. One person here. One person here. I like you. You're on red, so you will be the one here. The marriage, kingdom marriage relationship is broken into two major stages. Okay, let's have the big man as marriage. You come to here. Let's have the yes. This is marriage and married life properly. Before that, there is what is called engagement. I'm going to clear a lot of obstacles for you today. Before that, there is what is called engagement. These are the two basic stages in Christian and kingdom-driven marriages. To start with, marriage in the kingdom is covenant. It's entering into covenant with another human being. And that's why is the best picture to depict the kind of relationship, the kind of relationship we have with God, and the kind of relationship the church has with Christ. It's a covenant relationship you're going into. So there are two primary stages, not three. Now, in our modern society, we have created a third one. We call sometimes we have different names for it: relationships, courtship dating which is a baptismal name for boyfriend girlfriend relationship because I'm going to take you to the Bible you see that it doesn't exist but I'm going to make room for it the reason I'm going to make room for it I don't want you to feel like what are you saying, Pastor? Does it mean I just meet somebody who will start moving into the serious part without getting to know ourselves? You will find out in the Bible that this stage does not last long. The length of courtship is determined by one factor. The moment the concept, the consent of the woman is obtained by the man that is weighing her. This is the weighing stage. And remember that everything that happens here is depicted in our relationship with Jesus. As you study, if you want to test the validity, the authenticity of any principle that you are using or teaching, verify it compared with the relationship that Jesus has with the church there is also another relationship in scripture you can use to compare it compare it with the relationship that God has with Israel God was married to Israel and Jesus is married to the church of course God married Israel and his son Jesus married the church both were co are covenant relationships so whatever you are preaching because you are not the author of marriage marriage began with God he was the one that conducted the first wedding he designed and built this relationship and he born on certain core principles 
and values. So this stage only lasts long while the bride has not agreed. You see a lady, you like her. You want to marry her. And then you start weighing her, you start approaching her, you are trying to, you know, convince her to finally agree to marry you. That can last long if she's saying no. And let's assume that you have the patience to continue going. If this stage lasts for two years, it's because within this period she has been saying no. She doesn't want. And then finally, it took you two years to finally get her to say yes. But if the woman that you are chasing says yes in two weeks, this stage must end and move to the serious part. Do you know what this wooing stage, cutting stage, dating stage is in Christianity? It's what you call evangelism. The moment a sinner is ready to accept Christ's proposal and accept his you know, proposal for marriage, you don't keep them dating anymore. You lead the sinner to marriage vows. You lead him to Christ. I'm sure you guys read your Bible. And so, even if I don't go and read that, too many because there are some very important scriptures I would like to read. If I don't read everything I make reference to, so I'm sure you will be able to check it out. In Genesis chapter 24, Abraham wanted to get a wife for his son Isaac. And so he delegated that job to his servant by the name of Eliezer and asked him to go back to his people and get a wife for Isaac. And he, he put the man under a, a covenant not to choose the women of Canaan for Isaac. Now listen, Abraham is a type of God the Father. Isaac, who needs a bride, is a type of Christ. Eliezer now, the man that is charged with the responsibility, is a type of the Holy Spirit, who is now the one that traveled down to the world to get a bride for Christ. So the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. All that we are doing, you and I are doing, is working along with him, partnering with him, collaborating with him to finally find Christ's bride. Now you are bride of Christ, but when you are out there winning souls, it's still the project that is going on. The moment the person you are preaching to, you are ministering to, says yes, this stage ends. So now you can see the mistake we are making. When Eliezer finally got to the, the city, the hometown of Abraham, and found Rebekah at the well of waters, and then, you know, he made some prayers, just like we also pray in choosing a bride, and all of that. And then God finally directed the steps. The moment he started talking to the woman, and the woman was cooperating, and he saw that God was the one leading him, Immediately, the discussion you have here is not even much of what the young people do these days. They get into too much of all this, I love you, I don't love you, and all that. And it's important to express love, I know. But then, after that stage, there are a lot of important things to discuss. They are not, for example, a lady had to ask, whose daughter are you? At this stage, because it's the stage of inquiry, it's not just dating. You want to know that person. You ask questions about the person's family, not just the person's. You find out the profession, what the man does and what the woman does. You find out whether they are believers or not. I'm just translating it. You find out their values. You find out their conviction, their worldview. Then you find out about their family because it doesn't end with just that individual. Many a time, the values they are going to live out when you marry them are the values they grew up with in their home. There's a man and a woman that raised that man and probably for 25, sometimes 28, maybe 30 years. It depends on the age when you finally got to meet. And they have imbibed this. You need to be careful about the family, get to find out what you can about the upbringing and the environment and the values under which that guy grew. 
Now, in the kingdom of God, we know that there is something else that can counter that. In the natural society, parents will normally follow up on this subject of inquiring about the families, what kind of people they are. Do their women leave their husband and jump out and follow other men? What about this man's family? Do they run mad? Do they kill their wives? And all kinds of, you want to know where you are the people you're giving away your daughter to. But in the kingdom, when you come into the kingdom, we also belong to families. The Bible said God has set the solitary in families. If I find out you are coming after one of my daughters and you attend the church where they do restomania, where they prophesy for morning till night, where all they see is demons and village people pursuing you. They don't disciple you. They don't raise people in the word of God. This is a family. This is a spiritual family this guy is coming out for. And you come and tell me, Pastor, I met him. He's born again because he says Jesus is Lord. Forget about that. Because at the end of the day, all those things he is raised with is what he's bringing into your home. And tomorrow now, they will carry you, a well-discipled girl, to water side to wash your head. Or the, you are now pregnant, they tell you we have to go and meet his wife or meet one white garment, red garment, because that is the culture, the value he was raised with. Don't think it's not important. F make sure that when you are going for people, check their spiritual upbringing, check whether they are disciples. And even if it's the same church, we are members of one, the same church, it is not enough. Is it just a church goer or a disciple. Check that. In the natural, check if he's a man, check how he respects his father, how he, he, he treats his mother. Because what he does, those ones that get back to him, he abuses them, he abandons them, he mistreats them. You are going to be the next. In the spiritual house, Check how they respect their pastor, whether they are submitted to authority, how they respect, and all of that. I wish I have time to look into this. But the most critical is the Christian values that they are raised with. Go and see today how marriages are falling apart, and many of these people are from different families, Christian families. Because many churches, is not everywhere you go, you meet men like this who are strong in upbringing and in teaching the kingdom, not just the gospel of salvation, not just grace. The Bible didn't say grace only came by Jesus Christ. It said the Lord came by Moses, but grace and truth. People who also teach the truth and the values of the kingdom, because that's what grows and matures people. Grace is the milk that you bet babies with and maybe feed them on for a while. I'm not saying adults don't eat, need it, but you have to bring solid food. Truth. So these are the kind of things you check at this stage because most of the time young people are busy with the emotion. The only thing they're doing here is emotion. Jesus said, I will build my church. And he specifies what he will build it on. He said, on this rock. I'm sure you guys know already that that rock was not Peter. That rock was the revelation that Peter caught, the revelation of Jesus Christ. But I also want to go further. The rock is not just the person of Jesus. The rock represents the teachings of Christ. Because when Jesus explained the rock by himself in Matthew 7, he said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them is like a wise man that built his house on the rock. So the rock in totality is the person of Jesus and the principles that he taught. The person of Jesus and the values he taught. It's not just believing in Jesus. Are you following after his teachings? So if I meet you in church and you profess Christianity, you're a young woman, I feel attracted to you and I'm pulled and I want to, and it's getting close. I see that you, it's just profession that you have. As by your life, it's patterned after Babylon. I know what you're going to do to me if I marry you. You are going to marry hell. 
I know what, I don't need anybody to tell me. If I think that I love the person, what I could do, suspend anything about proposal or marriage and get involved in encouraging and influencing that girl to go through discipleship. And do it not because you want to marry. Do it because you want to raise a follower of Jesus Christ. If she turns out well, good. Oh, I need to move, but I don't know why I'm wasting, spending a little more time here. Do you know one of the things, the, the danger of overstaying here is that we have borrowed some ideologies from Babylon, from the world. You meet this sister. He said, we are dating. We are trying to know ourselves. Two years will pass. In some cases, seven years. In, during this period, if you hear what people are doing, I don't know about Abuja, but I came from Lagos. I can tell you, abortions, because pregnancy, they are moving around weekends. Sometimes we will go visit, sleep over, all sorts of things are going. After seven years, he said, you are not the one for me. The Lord has shown me that you are not the one. He moves to this one. He starts again. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. His boyfriend girlfriend relationship repackaged and sold to the church as courtship. And with all the years we spent saying we are trying to know ourselves, it has not improved the quality of marriage. Our parents used to have more solid marriage, even some of them that never got to know anything that their parents, even their arranged marriages, were more successful than this so called nonsense. And I'm sorry if I offend you. I'm trying to help you. And then sometimes this guy has jumped to about four different sisters. Finally, he settles one, settles down for one. But guess what? These girls that have born seven years of their life, five years of their life, that one will start another one. Some of them, by the time they recover from the foolishness, they're in their mid-thirties, late-thirties, forties and go and see how many men has passed through the water. When she came to Christ, she wanted to be serious and serve God. But it's the wrong ideology of dating that got her into all this mess. You hear stories, how many abortions she has done for brother this, for brother that, and then this. How many things have gone under the water, gonorrhea, syphilis, all kinds of things. And finally, she is now 42, 38 and trying to get married. And then by the time she gets married, childbed becomes a major prayer point because what was free, what was easy in his season and his time is now hard. So, fasting and prayer and all of that. And these are among the ones that finally get married. Though, that many, 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 many becomes mature singles, move into their 40s and 50s and there is nobody. And now it's a Tukumbo product. And this Tukumbo is the Tukumbo created inside the kingdom not even the life that was lived as an unbeliever before you came to Christ. Because after you came to Christ and he saved you and you submitted to circumcision and discipleship, you became another chaste virgin in Christ. But this one again now is in the kingdom. Eliezer talked to this beautiful lady. He's trying to get her for Isaac. 
and she showed some signs of encouragement immediately he asked about her family and he told her then the girl ran home to go and tell his her parents and then the brother Leba now went out to find Eliezer and invited him home I, ladies and gentlemen I hope you are hearing the two major sections in a Christian marriage in biblical marriage is engagement and marriage This is where I'm going to show us a few things. The Jewish people call this stage, this engagement stage, betrothal. If you complete this engagement stage or the betrothal stage, you are legally married. But the marriage is not consummated. Then you finally come to this final stage, which is the wedding ceremony. Right after that, the marriage now becomes consummated. I'm going to talk to you about these two stages. Take notes. The woman or the man that completes this stage is legally married. If you touch that lady, you have slept with somebody's wife. What the Bible calls engagement is different from what America has exported to us here. There is nothing like a private engagement between two people. Engagement must happen with the family of the bride involved. Notice, this takes place at the house of the father of the bride and this takes place at the house of the father of the groom. You see, eh? in your Bible? Yes. Maybe after this, both in connection with your Christian life, in connection with your relationship with God and in connection with even ministry and in connection with your family life, certain things will become clearer for you in the scriptures. Okay, there's a, a beautiful example because, you know, that thing you read in Genesis chapter 24, when Eliezer went to the family of the bride to meet all the obligations that permitted Isaac to marry Rebecca is what is called the engagement ceremony. And all those conditions that are met here is what Jesus has already met with the church. What is now left is the ceremony that will take place in the groom's father. And that one is the one that will happen when you and I experience the marriage supper of the Lamb. But between now, when we have given our life to Christ, and when we are, are present in that wedding, you are legally married. Anything you do with the world or with Satan is adultery. Let me give you a scripture, an example, and then I will come back down. I'll come back down and uh, this is the story of uh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 19 I mean this is the story of Joseph and Mary ladies and gentlemen what was the relationship of Joseph to Mary as at the time the angel intervened angel Gabriel intervened and Mary got pregnant was it full marriage or betrothal? Who can tell me? 
is betrothal. That your woman has been betrothed to Joseph. So I will show you the seven stages, how they do the ceremony now. You will see it. So in Matthew chapter 1, verse uh, 19, I don't want to read too much. Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Now the, the man just found out that the woman he has paid bride price on is pregnant. Because you don't do betrothal by just promising a girl, I want to marry you. And two of us have agreed and we say we are engaged. You are not engaged. When you get engaged, the two families are involved. Actually, the completion of the process of engagement involves paying the dowry. I don't want to come down yet. Now, in the African traditional marriage, like, I don't know all the culture of the different African countries, but for those of you who are watching this, you might be watching from America and all that, there is something that happens in Africa that is closer to the biblical model of marriage. In Africa, we marry at two stages. The first stage is where you go to the family of the bride and then meet with the family and meet the obligation, including paying the dowry. That is what is called betrothal in the Bible. That is biblical engagement. In Nigeria here, we actually do a ceremony along with it. It's called traditional marriage. That is what the Bible calls betrothal or engagement. Now, there are a few cases where the betrothal happens when the kids are small but no marriage can happen till they grow they come of age the reason <laughs> majority of the betrothal happens to grown-ups okay yeah i'm reading verse 19 Matthew chapter 1 verse 19. So you guys asked me to work on the foundation so that we can set things right. That's what I'm doing. So I'm taking you back so that you will see where we got it wrong. And when you see where you have made mistakes, though, it's not so you can go and start feeling guilty or sorry for yourself. It's so that you can do correction cost correction because we have entered a season of rebuilding a season of reconstruction a season of restoration a season of revival both in the family and in the body of Christ and once we get it right at home and in the church it will result in a major shift for our nation okay then Joseph her husband he just found out that the woman he has paid dowry on, is pregnant. So being a just man, not willing to make her a public example. Do you know what this means? After engagement, if you get involved in a relationship with another man, the penalty is death. Usually the Jews will kill you by stoning. The penalty of relationship with another man at this stage is the same penalty as marriage because they are legal in marriage not willing to make her a public example because the Jews who have killed her was minded to put her away privately you go and check the root word put her where there is divorce I want to also say this if you complete this stage and you want to get out of this marriage you have to go through a process of divorce It's not just, uh, I walk away. Don't call me again. I remove your name from my phone. No. Because what you did is just between two of you and you're calling it engagement. It's not engagement. You don't hide engagement. Your parents must know that you are engaged. Your, your, the par the, okay. A man has not taken you to his family. His father doesn't know you. His mom doesn't know you. His pastor doesn't know you. He has refused to come and see your own pastor. He has refused to come and see your parents. He says it's engagement and you are wasting five years of your life for him. Breaking it at this stage is as tough as breaking it at this stage. Because it's a legal process. 
because what you have done here is legal and binding. Not wanting to make her public, decided to put her away. Then the angel of God came in the night. Of course, let's see what the angel even said. Please, go. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Angel is calling a betrothed woman his wife. The marriage has not been consummated. There is no sex. There is no nothing. But he's already calling it his wife. Why? He said, fear not to take Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, okay. I'm not sure how strong that one has entered, so I will show you another scripture. Maybe this time it will enter very well. Engagement is not something light. Deuteronomy chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 22. Now, look at the law of marriage as it relates to adultery. I just want to show you. So, what is it that I'm doing? I'm going back to the Jewish, you know, uh, marriage customs to show you because it's from the Judeo-Christ. Our faith is a Judeo-Christian values. A lot of the things you are reading are written by Jews, the books. And within the context, and you are using your Gentile mind to interpret it. If you don't understand the context and the culture under which these things are written, there are many things that you will be misinterpreting. Now, see the, the culture, the laws, as it relates to adultery. If a man is found sleeping with a woman that is married, you, then both of them shall die. Do you see the penalty for adultery? Is death both the man that lay with her and the woman so you shall put away evil from Israel now let's go to engagement the next verse if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto her husband do you see like the case of Mary if Joseph had made her her case public she would have been dead If a damsel that is a virgin is betrothed to her husband and the man finds her in the city and sleeps with her, you know, King James said, lie with her. Now, look at what will happen. Then you shall bring both of them out to the gate of the city and you shall stone them with stones that they die. Both the man and the woman will die. Do you see the same penalty for adultery is the same penalty for messing around after engagement. Now watch. Both of them shall die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city. And the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. Do you see what the angel said to Mary? Take Mary, your wife. Do you see what God is saying here? That woman that is engaged is somebody's wife. So it is not this type of engagement that you are doing today that they are talking about. Because he has humbled his neighbor's wife, so you shall put away evil from among your people. The penalty for messing around with an engaged woman and a married woman both is the same, death. Now watch for a single girl. See the situation of a single girl. Watch. Now, if a man find a betrothed damsel in a field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. There's still death penalty. But this case is rape. God said, treat rape like murder. Look at it, the next verse. You shall do nothing to the young woman. There is no sin in the woman deserving of death. For just as when a man rises against his neighbor and kills him, even so is this matter. Do you see murder? When somebody lays in wait for another person, sets a trap, you are passing a pants on you at the back and kill you, that's how rape is. So you don't punish the woman that is raped, it's the man that did it that must die. 
there is still death penalty but you don't punish the one that is innocent now look at a single woman yes next thing verse 28 if a man finds a young woman who is a virgin who is not betrothed this is a single girl and he seizes her and lies with her of course i give you another another chapter exodus that said seduces her so whether you forced her or you seduced her you talk to her and she agreed you lie with her see the old testament law and they are found look at the what will happen yes you don't kill anybody the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her he shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days if you go to exodus 22 where it is seduction you confuse the girl and not and you sleep with her in the jewish whatever you will end up paying the dowry and marrying her and then that's part of what i have learned and i'm going to say this for the sake of the pro, the future of the church and all of that as a pastor who has worked with young people u.s everywhere i've seen a lot of things when you get into the issue of young people when i find out a situation where sexual activity is already going on and all kinds of things and the two people are, are believers it should not happen in the body of christ but this is the kind of disaster that we are facing in these last days what i tell the pastor or if it is within my domain is facilitate marriage move them fast to this stage get them to go and see the parents of course we did a police reform program and i saw all sorts you get into a barrack you see these policemen living with women that are not married to the parents don't know where their daughter is when i did some mission work in accra i, I spent three years there with my wife what we saw in that place you will see also they have three children they are not even married even in some cases the woman even had children from so and once you find out that these people are believers mm, break all the other barrier and get the man to go and take responsibility and now move to this stage and now to that stage let them not start with it you might not do a white wedding for them they might not have to wear white but move the process don't leave them and leave the mess we are called into a redemptive ministry redemptive program that's how the mess can stop and there are situations where they can't even move the religion is a mess let that whole thing end and end so that both people can begin their life and separate them not just separation in mouth stop visiting you know that there is no way that thing is going and you are with that guy three years of your life and every time you say let me just go and say, stop going to see him stop calling him stop leaving him alone because emotional issues are very sticky that's how I met a girl after being abandoned by a man with a child. And the guy denied her. She went through shame, went through, and parents have kicked her out. She raised that child. The child was four years. One day the man saw her again. I, you know that I like you. Just forgive me. Just whatever. Next thing, another pregnancy. And then he vanishes again. Slapping anointing came on me when I found her. But you can't do that. You feel like flogging. You don't meet a guy because he said, Hi, I love you. Another weekend, you pack your bag, you move to his house. You don't do that. We don't do that. Is Babylonian culture that is, we don't do that in the kingdom. There is no covenant between you and him. Can you imagine walking to a Mercedes car company where they sell brand new cars or Range Rover? You say, I, I, I like this car. I like this 2020 model. It's really very nice and beautiful. All the wonderful things they say to you, they can say it to a car too. He has v boot he has the front tires, the wheel, whatever. So all what? you like it you have to go inside your office and meet the owners and meet the obligation pay and collect the receipts then you can now go 
But can you imagine going in, you take it, you go and test drive for a year. After test driving, then the Lord will now speak to you that this is not the particular car you want. That actually is not Range Rover. I'm not really a Range Rover person. It's Mercedes one. Then, then you come back to take Mercedes test drive for another three years. After three years, then the Lord will now show you that it's not Mercedes that is your brand. It's actually um, the what is it one from from Japan? Toyota. It's now Toyota that you want. You now come for Toyota and test drive for two years. Then he said, it looks like, it looks like this is it. Because young people always ask me, what's the difference? We love each other. I'm talking about here. We love each other. It's the same love. We do the thing, we don't do the thing. It's the same thing we're going to be doing when we're married. What's the difference? Then I ask them, what's the difference between when you pay for a car, you take it home and start driving it everywhere and going into a shop, seeing a car that you love, you really loved it. You are passing now. There's a car shop. And you look, you see one that you love. You are in love with the car. And then you jump over the fence, take it, drive off. Why is it that when police catch you, they put you in jail? What's the difference between walking through a phone shop and then you see a phone that you love, Samsung, 2020, you pay for it and you get receipt. And you walk away with authority. Get men out there, you are walking, you are not afraid. What's the difference between passing through a phone shop and seeing one that you like and you take it? And then you go and start using it. And then the security catches you. Why is it that for the same phone and you really like both phones? For one, you go to jail for the other. You can even carry it before SSS and be making call. Carry it in front of police and be making call. What's the difference? Now you know why when God arrests you, he also has a prison called hell for fornication, for adultery, and for all of these things. Because what you are doing is illegal. There is legality and morality before you can say you are practicing righteousness. That one that went and took it, you know what he's doing. Without pain, he's stealing. That's what you're also doing when you are doing this. That's why even if it's a little six-year-old child that knocks on the door, you, if you see how your heart will jump, that's why you won't want anybody to hear. That's why you'll be ashamed if it comes out. Let me show you seven major things that happen here. The only thing that happens here is wooing. You can talk to a girl or you know, whatever because really it's the Jewish men that choose their wives. Actually, sometimes there are situations where somebody is delegated to do that selection. So, that is the only thing that happens here. And the moment that person accepts your proposal, that means that there is consent. It's time to go and see the family. So seven major things happen here. Number one, you go meet the family of the bride. If you read that Genesis 24, you see what, you know, this guy did, Eliezer. And uh, I want to say this. Men marry. Women are given a marriage. I don't care if you're a bank manager. You have come to Abuja, you become a big girl. You have even become a pastor. So you can dis disorganize, you know, disregard your parents, disregard your pastor, a big person like me. Which one is this? I have to see. Who am I seeing? I know what I want. Hmm. Women are given in marriage. You know where we get our authority? When we get to wedding, that's where the church comes in. We always ask that question, who gives this girl in what? And it must be an authorized person from the family. If the father is not there, there must be somebody else delegated with that authority to perform that function. If the family is not there, usually the church is careful about proceeding. Okay, I leave that. 
because there are a few exceptions there and there, but I don't want to go into that. That's the standard procedure. Okay. So, you now bring what is called the marriage covenant. It's time to bring it and discuss it. A marriage covenant act contains the things you're going to do for this woman, the things, obligations, uh, things she's going to expect if she marries you. And her own obligation towards you and responsibilities. So it contains two major things. It contains inheritance. It contains obligations or responsibilities. It contains things you're going to gain and get. But it also contains certain responsibilities. For example, I don't need to say that on the part of the woman, that means from that day, the principle of chastity and separation from every other person obtains. So, and the woman must accept it before you move ahead. She must get that document. The man usually is instrumental in crafting it, but sometimes there could be a discussion in crafting the content. And then at the end of the day, the woman must accept it. If you go to Exodus chapter 19, you see when God married Israel, the contract he gave them is what you call the Ten Commandments and the the pen track, the five books of the Bible, the first five books of the Bible. And then that day, Moses, after getting all that, went to the people and the people said, all that the Lord said, I wish I can, I can read all these scriptures for you, all that the Lord said we would do. Uh -huh. Then we can proceed. So you have the marriage covenant. It is always written on paper. Because it's going to be signed before you end this stage. And in the times of the New Testament, Jesus gave us a new covenant. And it contains all our inheritance in him, but it also contains our obligations. Young people, I want to remind you that among our responsibilities, I just want to mention only one is this issue of the Great Commission. Because you cannot be somebody's bride and refuse to have children for him. Hello, God hates unfruitfulness. You can't say, no, my figure, I love my figure, I'm such a pretty, I can, I'm not going to allow anybody mess around with my, I, I can't have children, I'll go and tie my womb. It becomes a big issue. Marriage is not for selfish people. Marriage, I'm going to make a statement now, everybody listen very carefully, young people. Marriage, is not for somebody who just wants to live a self-centered, selfish life. Marriage is a type of covenant that God created to help human beings experience self-transcendence. You know what I mean? Marriage is a place you die to self. Marriage is for people who want to share their life. Marriage is for people who are willing to sacrifice. Before I... Uh, Okay, we have to roll money, so I can I can divide this. But I need to tell you, there are two kinds of love in relationships. Two. Before you enter covenant, the type of love you have here is selfish love. Because everything you are checking here is how the thing will benefit you. Oh wow, the guy is really handsome. Mm -hmm. uh, the way he talks to me, he makes me, you know, mm -hmm. ah, you know, he spends on me. Mm -hmm. Everything is about you, you, what you are getting out of him. And do you know what? God permits it at this stage. Because this stage is for checking the other person out. So that you don't end up with somebody you don't love. Because once you get into covenant, you are going to be yoked with that person for life. Till death. Death is the only thing allowed to break that yoke is legally binding for life. So at this stage, you can do all that selfish love, you know, and all that. And that's what they sing for you in all this music you see in movies, and then you read the novels, and young girls have gone through school, uh, read all these different novels we read in school. You think you know what love is. That is not love. Don't 
the moment you are now ready to move to this stage that involves covenant you have to now transcend from that selfish love to selfless love <laughs> The type of love that now start thinking about because all the while you are here talking about him you have never thought about what you're going to give him the sacrifices you're going to make for him the values you're going to add to his life you're only thinking about have you ever seen anybody that's thinking about finding a spot at the stage of choosing a spot that's thinking about mm, this girl is so nice make a promise I will never beat her for the rest of my it doesn't even cross their mind the value the other person will get all the assessment at this point is the value you're going to get from the person but you see now what changes the game is that once you enter into covenant covenant is I'm, I'm willing to share my life with you covenant is I'm willing to lay down my life for you covenant is I'm willing to sacrifice my life for you covenant is that's what Jesus was saying no love is greater than this than that a man should lay down his life because from that moment he took his disciples to the communion table and then on the way to the cross everything now is about sacrifice the relationship has changed it's no more casual relation he even told them i don't call you servants anymore this thing is moving to another level i call you friends because everything i get from my father i've shown it to you. this everything about here is sharing it's about sacrifice there are three s that obtains in covenant driven marriages the first s is sanctification that's why for the man they say leave your father and mother and cleave to your wife but it's not only your father and mother your girlfriend those ones that are like you that rely on all those other whatever you have to severe that if not you won't be able to be who you are required to be marriage requires sanctification sanctification is separating yourself spiritually speaking from sin from Satan from the world you see it has separation in it and then consecrating yourself to God for his holy purposes. In marriage, it's separating yourself from all these other relationships so you can truly give yourself to that man or woman that you love. The second S of marriage is sacrifice. Oh, from this mean level, the type of love required transcend from self to selfless. The greatest thing God can do for you. Let me preach that one to Mr. President. The greatest thing, the greatest grace, the greatest deliverance God can give you and any man is to set you free for self. That until that happens, the journey to Christ likeness does not truly begin. That is why when you come to Jesus in the marriage covenant that he gives us, he said you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. The problem is that in the new covenant, we only read our benefits. We don't read our obligations. That's the kind of gospel that's been preached in today's world. Healing is mine. Amen. We are not saying it's not true. Prosperity is mine. Amen. We are not saying it's not in the covenant. Ah, protection is mine. Amen. We are not saying it's not. You calculate everything Jesus will do for you and minus everything you are to do for him. Then how is that a covenant? A covenant is a two-way commitment. What you are proposing by that kind of message is a parasitic relationship. A covenant is a symbiotic relationship. The greatest thing that spoils marriage is selfishness and self-centeredness. If a couple conquers that, they can move in back into the Garden of Eden that Adam and his wife was kicked out from. They can make their home a small heaven on earth. 
a Christian marriage is a marriage of two selfless people that love each other and they are willing to lay down their life for each other just like Jesus did for us. The third S in marriage is service. This is meeting each other's needs. There will be competition on how to outdo each other in service. It will revolutionize your whole concept of marriage and help you to extend revival to our young people and to churches everywhere because the enemy has used this faulty ideology to bring a plague of immorality in the church. The first S is sanctification. First Thessalonians chapter 4. For you know the commandments. This is a command that we give you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Verse 4. That each of you should know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. Verse 5. Not in passions of loss like the Gentiles who do not know God like the unbeliever we have imported this thing verse 6 that no one should take advantage and defraud his brother and I can add sister in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all sorts note that word there are consequences that follow these things and many people are already carrying it apart from diseases and so many things many open themselves for demonic assaults for the Lord is the avenger of all such as we have also forewarned you and testified. Verse 7. For God did not call us to uncleanness but to holiness. Verse 8. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man. It's not Pastor David's opinion, any other person's opinion. He who rejects this does not reject man but God who has given us his Holy Spirit. Sacrifice will be the second one. But you don't get to that stage of sacrifice till there is covenant. Don't go because somebody says, I love you. Go and start spending all your monthly income on him and all kinds of things. You will see that that does not obtain. There might be some nice cities, some small, small things you do for it. Yes, but you don't move to that level of self, that total giving of yourself. It was after David and Jonathan entered into covenant. Jonathan stripped his garment, gave him, removed his sword, gave him, removed. Because at that moment, David could have killed him. He said, I emptied my account. Can you imagine? One girl even started sending dollars. And sending until she has sent. Because she moved to UK. And the guy traveled from Nigeria for holidays. They met. He said, we are going to marry that, 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 to whatever. They, they have done. I love you. This one, this one. Because when the case came to me, we called the guy. He said, I didn't promise her marriage. We only said, let us have a relationship. He said, he's sleeping with the girl. The girl sent up to 30,000 pounds. According to her, that she was sending money for him to plan their marriage. And one day she saw advert the guy was wedding I've met that guy in the course of our national youth project this guy calls me and said this is what 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 presents evidence of all the different transfer I said I can't do anything but I'll try and talk to his pastor I, I, I called the pastor of the church where he attended I said see what is going on I'm sorry to say this they went ahead with the wedding he said can't you hear the young man he said they are not even engaged there is anything it's just relationship can't doesn't a guy have right to change his mind i found out that this is not the one for me he said but what about all the money collected to the guy he said there's no agreement she didn't say it's for you don't do that you carry your school fees and get and your parents think you're in school they don't know that you are not in school you just that's the guy because he told you I have this business idea when, when you help me just give me three years I will have made money then I will now come and marry you if you did see the amount of disasters here if not for Jesus and the Holy Ghost the amount of suicide you'll be hearing even in churches you'll be wondering
30,000 pounds. The girl entered flight flew to Nigeria. He said, you have to stop the wedding. I said, I can't. It's not, it's not Dominion City. And even if it's Dominion City, of course, if it's Dominion City, I will have stopped it. Because that's criminal activity anyway. I won't stop you from marrying the other, but you must pay all that money back. Use her money to plan wedding with another person. The girl's world was wrecked. In our system, I still encourage young people to kind of date here. But I tell them, not more than a month, maximum one year. And I warn the ladies especially, he is not whatever. And, and remember that there is no covenant here. There is nothing that stops you from going with another person that is serious. The guy is not serious. There is no covenant here. Just playing around and fooling around and somebody that is serious comes around, you better do something with your life. Come and see my parents now. Come and meet my pastor. Now. Come, okay, start discipleship. Let's even know that you are heading somewhere. Ooh. What pained me in that place is that the pastor ignored all that and went ahead. I took note of that because I know him too and took note of that and kept quiet. <laughs> Three years passed and he had a leadership role. He took a large chunk of their building project and escaped. And the country he escaped to is where I go off. Next time I saw him in my meeting, he came and sat at the back. He came, ah, daddy, no, no. I said, who is your daddy? He didn't know the man told me what he did and carried that same woman and took off outside the country. And then put $200 in envelope and came to do all this. That I, I said slapping anointing came on me in the US. I said, but at the end of the day, I'm glad you are here, sir. Because you know we have some issues on <laughs> <laughs> we have some issues. Somebody will come to a church, like somebody create problem here and run over to the ministry. I learned from David, if you kill Saul and carry his crown and come near me. Let me know said complete it. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I have to. I have to. Please.